howdy pals and gals. Today I'm coming at you with part two of taking you through my favorite products from my favorite brands. I'm just doing a good old roundup of products that have worked for me, products that I have in my collection, going brand by brand and approaching it as if you were walking into a Sephora, an Ulta, a drugstore, you're overwhelmed by the abundance of brands and products that exist in the world. And I thought it would be fun to just take you through each of my favorite brands, my go-to brands, some of the makeup companies that I have many products from and showing you what my favorites and most tried and true trusted products are from each so that's what we're doing today I'm doing another round of brands today and please let me know in the comments down below when this is done if there are any other brands that you want me to do because I think we could squeeze another little part three uh, during everyday May so let's uh, let's stick with part two today and let's go through some of the brands and I'll show you what my favorite products are starting with makeup forever because this is recently in the top of my brain when we were trying the HD skin a little compact here and recently did a review absolutely beautiful what a gorgeous product this is a lot of your guys's feedback was saying that you wish it was customizable and i completely agree and i do wonder if that's like going to be the next stage that they do another little build your own compact because the the products themselves are gorgeous but i agree that i would love to be able to choose my own shades but this is just amazing they also have the blush palette version of this and it's just like a really good product if it works for you and i wanted to bring that up because that's new in obviously but Makeup Forever in terms of like base products, there have just been many base products from them that I've loved in the past. The Reboot Foundation, the Makeup Forever Reboot. One of my favorite go-to foundations of all time. I actually haven't used it in quite a bit and I was going through my makeup collection like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pull this out. This is actually like a deeper shade for me going into the summer and when I have my fake tan on and whatnot. It's just one of those perfect foundations that you put on your skin, it smooths everything out. It looks so natural, it's undetectable on the skin and just a good tried and true base, especially if you have dry skin, this just soaks in and looks amazing. One of my favorite foundations of all time. Would highly recommend if you're looking for a new one to try. And then the Makeup Forever HD concealers, like these just, oh man. I have three different shades. I have used these time and time and time again. Absolutely one of my go-to favorite concealers of all time. Definitely more on the fuller coverage end. It is a self-setting concealer, so it's one of those that just looks good, absolutely beautiful on its own. Does what it needs to do. You can apply it under the eyes, all over the face. I don't necessarily like reach for this one when I'm like spot concealing. That one I reserve for more like potted concealers, but just like an all over, if you're like me and you like to slap your concealer on all over your face with no rhyme or reason, this is a perfect one for you. And they also have a lot of different like shades and undertones, which is nice. So I love to mix and match. Yeah, absolutely beautiful concealer. Then I wanted to talk about like all of Makeup Forever's powders because they do have customizable palettes, which I think is so nice. If you just want to build your own like one and done palette, I have this lovely little uh, blush palette here that I have two blushes in and a bronzer. I don't necessarily personally reach for this a lot, but I love anything that's customizable. So like with Makeup Forever, MAC, all the brands that sell palettes and you can just choose your your own. I think that's so nice. If you're like starting from scratch and building a makeup collection to be able to just completely customize and choose the shades that are right for you. I just love that there are brands like this that offer that. So they have this for their color products, but they also have this for their face powders. There's so many different options, which is amazing, which is why I don't see why they wouldn't offer that for these. Inglot's another brand that does that. But in terms of like the functionality and how the powders work, I mean, the payoff is perfect. The blendability is perfect. And they have all the colors and the rainbow. So love the little palettes. Perfect for travel too with the mirror. Those are great for makeup forever. And lastly, I wanted to mention the artist pencils because I mean, the Makeup Forever lip liners, the aqua lip liners, were my obsession. 3C and 5C, never forget, they slowly started taking away the shades when they introduced the artist pencils, but there's so many colors in these that are amazing, and I like that you can use them everywhere. They're artist pencils, you can put them anywhere. You can put them on your eyes, you can put them on your lips, you can draw lines wherever you want. They're completely versatile. I have a few shades like Endless Cacao, Anywhere Caffeine, I have a bright orange one, I have a red one. They have any color you could imagine, and they go on perfectly, so that is a beautiful, product from Makeup Forever and one that I always have in my collection. I also always have the <laughs> aqua lip liners, but some of the shades that I love don't exist anymore. So those are my like top picks, the, the top standouts in my makeup collection from Makeup Forever. Let's move on to MAC. This was one that you guys highly requested in the first version of this. And I feel like it goes without saying, like I don't necessarily believe that there's a bad product from MAC. Honestly, MAC has absolutely everything that you could possibly need and imagine. That being said, I have replaced a lot of my old MAC favorites and I'm not sure why that is entirely. I think it's just, sometimes I do just like to have new things. <laughs> I get bored of using the same things over and over again. I mean, I worked at MAC in 2014 and I'm like, 
sometimes I like to switch it up. I do have a few products that I will never get rid of in my collection, like my MAC Warm Soul, the original. This is one of the most beautiful blushes in existence on the planet. Also, I have my Whisper of Guilt highlight that has actually uh, shattered. It's shattered in the pan, so that's the only reason why I don't really use this one anymore, but the color is gorgeous, and obviously this was in the collection that I did with MAC back in the day, so these extra dimension skin finishes will always be a product that's close to my soul and my heart, and I will love them, and if you find a highlight or the powder that works for you, they're beautiful. Another product I don't really use anymore is the MAC Face and Body, and this originally, if I had like filmed this video a few years ago, this would have been one of my easy top, never without go-to foundations and products in general, the face and body foundation. I have this one in the shade C2. And this was actually a fresh bottle that I had bought before they, they reformulated it. They redid it. It's now the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body Foundation. And I'm not gonna lie, I haven't used it recently, but I know when they first reformulated it, I was just kind of like, the shades weren't the same. It didn't feel the same. I don't know. I just didn't have the same love and attachment and obsession. Uh, for it that I, I once did. So this is kind of like an archival product, but I felt like I had to mention it because I know someone would be like, what about face and body? And yeah, since they redid it, I just haven't really uh, played with it so much and we have a lot of new faves. So those are my archive products from MAC. <laughs> That sounds so lame, but you guys know what I mean. Fix Plus, never without Fix Plus. This is the coconut scent, but any Fix Plus will do, truly. I always have this in full size and travel in my makeup collection. This I treat differently than my setting spray. I use this as like a hydrating, refreshing spray. I use this as a setting spray. So sometimes when I'm doing my makeup in the morning, I feel a little bit sleepy. I'll just spritz this on before I do anything. You can use it to mix in with eyeshadows. Like it's just an all over good spray that I always have. I wanna talk about Max eyeshadows because though these days I don't reach for it too much, I do reach for like my smaller palettes I find, but I think it's just one of those things where the MAC individual eyeshadows, I, I'll never be without them in my makeup collection. This is my little neutrals collection. Some of these shadows I have had since 2014. Some of them don't have the backs on anymore. They're so old. I don't even know what shade it is anymore, but I just think that MAC is like the OG destination for eyeshadows and they have every color that you could possibly dream of. I have a neutrals palette. I also have a palette with my colors and it's just very nostalgic for me. I'll never part from these. And sometimes they bring out really nice collections of smaller individual palettes, like not the build your own customizable ones. And they can be really nice too, but yeah, MAC and eyeshadow, it's just like the original eyeshadow haven. So that's, if you're looking for eyeshadow, I mean, you can never go wrong with a MAC palette. I also wanna mention the MAC Eye Coals. Costa Rica is the shade that I use the most, thanks to Nikki Makeup, but Coffee is also one of my like original loves and Teddy. I actually did recently get rid of them because uh, the ones I had were rotten. And th I'm not gonna lie, there are a few new contenders in the game that have kind of replaced my, my brown eyeshadows, AKA Coffee. But I think Costa Rica is one of those very unique shades that more ready brown that I think is beautiful and just one of those original eye pencils that I feel like I'll always have in my collection regardless. So Costa Rica, one that I always have on hand. Now I did want to mention the lip pencils too, but it's kind of like, I just don't really reach for them. A little subculture, a little stripped down, but you know, if you find the shade that you love, like Max got the lip pencils, that's obviously one of the go-tos for so many people forever. I wanted to mention the Brush Brown Brush Stroke 24 Hour Liner, this one and the black. Beautiful, what a beautiful, beautiful eyeliner. If you don't like liquid eyeliner and you struggle with doing it like I do, this is just a very, very easy to use one. And I particularly love the brown, brush brown, a beautiful eyeliner, you cannot go wrong with that one. Let's talk about the Glow Play blushes, because this was a recent rediscovery of mine. I have the shade Blush Please, I also have So Natural and Cheeky Devil, but I think Blush Please is the ultimate shade. What a beautiful, unique, pillowy, bouncy formula, it's so soft. It looks so natural on the skin. I love how they played with the original blush packaging and made it this fun little transparent. I don't know, I just love this packaging. It's just like what blush is to me in my mind, this MAC blush. I love this formula, so unique, so cool. I would highly recommend that product from MAC. And then lastly, I had to mention the lipsticks because if you need a lipstick shade, you can go to MAC and you will find a lipstick shade that you're looking for. I don't wear them so much anymore, but there's definitely 
few shades that I always have in my collection uh, that are just kind of like the go-tos for me. Like Honey Love is the original nude that I had in my collection and loved. Like I wore this one absolutely every day when I worked at MAC. It was just one of my favorites of all time. And so I feel like I'll just always have this one. I also have the shade Creme Cup. There's a few other brighter colors that I have too, but these two are just kind of the, the OGs, the go-tos for me. So MAC lipsticks, you can never obviously go wrong. And that's just, those are the products that came to mind. Those are a few like standout pieces in my collection. But again, MAC is a pretty endless list. <laughs> I can pretty much give my stamp of approval on anything. Some of you might be like, oh my God, where's the strobe cream? What about the strobe cream? And again, I have MAC strobe cream. I feel like I will always have one of those in my collection too, but I'm just kind of like not in the primer phase of my life. I haven't been reaching for it as much, honestly. It's a product that I love. I have loved for so many years and I, absolutely would recommend it if it's something you're looking for, but it's just like not in my top at this time. So that's my little Mac roundup. She's still here. She's present. She's here. Now, speaking of primer, let's move on to Laura Mercier because Laura Mercier is a big color brand for me. There's a lot of people who love like and are obsessed with her base products, like the foundations, the tinted moisturizers, the concealers. Oh my God, there's so many different concealers like Lisa Eldridge and so many other makeup artists, like the little compact cream concealers, like people raved about them for years. It just never worked for me. It was never like a standout brand for me in terms of bases. That being said, I do believe that their range of primers are so beautiful, specifically the high hydrating primer for me. There's also the illuminating primer. I love this one. It feels so good on the skin. Sometimes when I just want that wash of cool hydrating ness under my makeup, this is one of the primers that I reach for. It's beautiful. Definitely a standout from Laura Mercier for me. Like blushes. Laura Mercier does blushes so well. The frickin' tinted moisturizer blush. I love so much. My two favorite shades are Provence and La Piscine. She knocked it out of the park with this one. If you're looking for a liquid blush, this is such a gorgeous formula. It blends out so, it's such a dream to blend out on the skin. There, it's kind of limited in the shade range. They're all very much kind of on the same train of like these muted like pinks and berries like they're all just kind of that same tone i would have loved like if she brought out like a bright cool toned pink an orange some deeper shade there could have been a lot more spicy shades and i look forward to hopefully like more shades of these coming out because the formula a plus plus i didn't love the bronzer so much it's not my preferred formula for bronzer so the blush is huge standout and then you can never ever ever go wrong with a laura mercier powder blush these have been around since the dawn of time with the fun new additions popped in fresco fresco is one of my most worn used blushes always have this one in my collection it's gorgeous another one i've loved is chai actually I don't know where that went. A ghost took it in the night, <laughs> but a recent launch actually, I mean, all that sparkles. Like this was such a glorious addition to the Laura Mercier blush lineup. Absolutely beautiful. Two of my favorite blushes that I have in my collection. Again, so, so gorgeous in the color department. For eyes, the caviar stick eye colors. Oh man, I have had these since the beginning of time, the beginning of my YouTube life. Coco is my most used, most worn shade out of the bunch, but uh, Amethyst, we had a hot moment with Amethyst. And there's just, they just have all the shades. If you're looking for a classic go-to, like will not lead you astray, creamy eye pencil, these are gorgeous. I do feel like nude sticks has filled my void in the sense that they just have like so many more shades that you're looking for. This formula I do find a little bit more creamy in comparison. The wear time doesn't really make a difference for me, but I feel like this is just a, a classic. You can never go wrong with <laughs> Laura Mercier Caviar eye pencil. And speaking of pencils, her lip pencils in a similar, very similar packaging format. Some of my favorite lip products that I always have and the brighter shades, there's a lot of beautiful like bright oranges, reds and pinks. Oh God, it's such a gorgeous, Gorgeous lip product and they wear so beautifully and I've had them for years. Actually, I'm sure all of mine are rotten at this point, but would be like my top pick. If I was staring at a Laura Mercier carousel, I'd like go to the lip pencils. These are beautiful. If you haven't tried them, rub them on your lips and thank me later. So the next brand was highly requested, Charlotte Tilbury. I have, I have a lot of feelings about Charlotte Tilbury. We go way back. That was one of the first like aching loves that I had. I remember I flew to Ireland. I was in Ireland for a little summer abroad school semester and went on a hunt for Charlotte Tilbury. Oh my God, they used to only ship to Canada on Beautylish. Like I just, I love Charlotte Tilbury. But a lot of the products are very 
hit or miss for me. Starting with like a category that I don't really touch so much from Charlotte Tilbury is the eyes. The eye pencils, the eyeshadow palettes, the eyes to mesmerize, like little cream pots, I never really liked those. The eyeshadow palettes, I just was obsessed because when Charlotte Tilbury was like really big on her YouTube channel back in the day, I used to gasp every time she would do an eyeshadow on the models, it was like, oh my God, it looks so good, it looks so beautiful. And I just found that I never reached for the eyeshadow palettes. So the eyes in general kind of just like don't hit for me. I will say one product that I love, would highly recommend is the Full Fat Lashes Mascara. One of my favorite mascaras of all time. I don't currently have it, but putting up there, that's a number one for Charlotte Tilbury for sure. The Beautiful Skin Foundation. I have talked about this previously, but I have the shade four in this. It's gorgeous. One of my most worn, clearly favorite foundations ever, ever. It's so natural, so glowing, like a medium buildable coverage. It's just juicy. Will never lead me astray when it comes to like occasion makeup. I don't love the concealer so much. The Beautiful Skin Concealer it didn't really do anything for me. I definitely have other favorites, but the foundation, if uh, you can get the shade that works for you, gorgeous. Chef's Kiss. Didn't love the high blushes, the highlighters, the blushes. I also didn't really love the matte ones. The powder blushes, however. Oh, what a classic. The cheek to chic blushes. The the only shade that I actually have in my collection is Pillow Talk. I literally love all of them. I look at them on the stand and I'm like, yes, any shade that works for you. Gorgeous formula, gorgeous packaging. Absolutely. One of my more worn neutral blushes in my collection for sure. Um, another color product. I think they did so well. Oh my God. The Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow. Oh, this is one of my favorite products of all time. They have a couple different shades, but this, I don't know why she doesn't just make this an entire range because this packaging, this packaging, the formula, the use of it, oh my God, this color, it's perfect. <laughs> if you want something that is just such a joy and a pleasure and a beautiful thing to reapply, like pull out of your purse throughout the day, looks so succulent on the cheeks and the lips. This is one of my favorite products of all time. Like bury me with this product right here. This is, <laughs> this is such a gorgeous product. I am obsessed. Also right in line with that is the Jewelgasm lip product. I'm not crazy about the lip liners and the lipsticks. They're great, they're great. And I think the packaging is beautiful. And I have so many of them in my collection. Like, of course I have the Pillow Talk lip pencil. I have the Pillow Talk lipsticks. I have so many shades. I just don't reach for them. Honestly, I really don't. There's a lot of other like lip products that I reach for over them. So it's not that I wouldn't recommend them. If you find a shade that you love, absolutely. But yeah, it's not my preferred one. However, the Jewelgasm. Oh my God, the smell of this. I'll never get over it. It smells like a ring pop. It's perfect. It's one of those like cool little lip stains. Like it changes and gets deeper when it's applied onto your lips. And one of my favorite fun little lip products that has ever come out from Charlotte Tilbury and any other brand. I love this. And I, <laughs> I do have backups of this in my makeup collection because I never want to be without it. One of my favorites always. The Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder, one of those perfect little setting powders that I do always have in my collection and love to have. Obviously, I'm just having this moment with my Givenchy powder, but that is also a colored powder. So when I need to just like set all over, need something on the go, this is one of my favorite powders that I've used uh, the longest. And this is actually the first powder that like got us into the powder world. We never used to be powder people here on my channel. And she was the original converter <laughs> for the powder world. So I just, it's like Charlotte Tilbury packaging to me is just luxe. It screams luxe. Luxury and it's just one of those things that sits on your counter and you're just excited to use it, you know? It's also nostalgia for me. The Charlotte Tilbury is one of the original brands that I like ever splurged on when I was in university. So uh, speaking of that, Filmstar Bronze and Glow, we go way back. This is one of their holiday packagings, but the original packaging is obviously glorious too. But the Filmstar Bronze and Glow, I have gone through in my life. I have used these up. The shade in particular for me just works so beautifully with my skin tone, the sculpt and the highlight, but the sculpt is just that perfect tone. The images and videos of her applying this on models are forever burned into my face. It's like the original contouring, this and the Kevin Aquan sculpting powder. <laughs> like I just, I'll never be without it. And if you're looking for a palette, this is the perfect travel palette too. And I often travel with this. It's got a nice nice big mirror, which is so nice. And even though I'm very much in a cream phase right now with my contour and bronzing, uh, this is still forever one of my favorite products and would highly recommend it if you are looking for a powder palette that just does it all. I also love this as an eyeshadow. Oh my God, it's a beautiful, beautiful eyelid shade. Gorgeous, one of my favorite products always. The final brand that I wanna to cover today is NARS because NARS is another one of those brands that has been in my collection since the dawn of time. And there's so many, there's so many products that I have and I love in my collection from NARS. So forgive me, this is a long list, but let's try to make it through as swiftly as possible. I actually wanted to say that some of the products that I really don't reach for from NARS are the base products. And it's so funny because 
the NARS like foundations and tinted moisturizer, like the Laura Mercier ones, so many people have so many favorites. There's been multiple makeup artists that I've spoken to recently that are like, Sheer Glow is the favorite forever. And I'm like, do I need to revisit this? I don't know, Sheer Glow never really tickled my fancy. I, I'd say like my most frequented of the NARS bases is the tinted moisturizer, but even still, I just really don't reach for it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. There's just other products that I prefer. I also have the Light Reflecting Foundation, the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I just really, I don't reach for them. Maybe I just need to revisit them and kind of get up to date thoughts on them because they're just like not my go-to's. I don't know what to say. I'd be so curious to hear what you guys have to say. Do you have any favorites from NARS? You let me know. That being said, when it comes to concealer, in my eyes, NARS dominates. The Radiant Creamy Concealer, classic forever. Will never be without this in my collection. Would highly recommend it for absolutely everybody. Do you recall the time where every single human on the planet used the shade Custard on YouTube? It was like the shade that everybody used. I'm like, this certainly didn't work for everybody, but God bless their shade extension. And also the Soft Matte Complete Concealer will always have this in my collection. I did go through a phase where I exclusively used this. I haven't been using it so much recently, but if you're looking to spot conceal, this is the perfect, it's the perfect concealer for that. Always have it on hand. Another product that was kind of newer in the NARS lineup, and they have since like obviously changed the packaging and come out with it again, but they have the cream bronzers. They're beautiful. I have the classic shade Laguna. Absolutely love this. This is from the original summer collection launch that they did, but they do have it updated and they also extended the shades. Love the bronzing cream, gorgeous. Um, and I also do have the original Laguna. I actually did get the recent PR box where they sent like the new update packaging which they've already been doing for a few years now but part of me will just always hang on to the original Laguna because this is again one of the original first early products that I ever purchased from Sephora and I just feel like Laguna is the shade for me it's like a benefit hula you know one of those bronzers that I'm just like attached to and would always recommend and I love the original packaging too I just it's I just think it's so fabulous and so sleek and gorgeous and it gets dirty, but it's like cute. It's in a good way, you know? Right in line with these are the powder blushes. NARS powder blushes. Ugh. You know what? Now that I look at them, I really don't reach for them a whole lot. I also go through phases of these, but that's also because they have changed a lot of the original shades. Like some of my favorite shades no longer exist, which is very sad. And I know very frustrating when it comes to showing them on YouTube. So kind of like an archive product, I guess, but they have so many shades and you can never go wrong with an as blush some of them are matte some of them are glowing they're beautiful would absolutely recommend um i also love their liquid blushes i only have one shade in my collection orgasm it's beautiful beautiful formula very much in line with this this does not get enough love and recognition from me but definitely a favorite in my makeup collection the liquid blushes are gorgeous and i actually like how they sit it's nice love the packaging nars eyeshadow palettes hit or miss they do come out with a lot of uh, limited edition palettes so i think if you find a palette that works for you and the shades work for you, then it's perfect. I do love that they always have a really nice variety of neutrals in their palettes, and then they do like to add some fun pops of colors and shimmers. One of the palettes that I have in my collection is the Afterglow palette. Love this palette. It's gotten so much love and wear for me. Very, very funky packaging. Obviously this was one of their limited edition collections, but they all kind of all look very similar. <laughs> they repeat a lot of the shade stories. So typically when they do come out with new palettes, you can get a similar vibe. But if you find one that you love and you find the shades that work for you, they're beautiful. The formula is beautiful um, and they're very travel friendly. I love these palettes. The Velvet Matte Lip Pencils, what a classic. I feel like I will always have these in my collection and would recommend them. I do love anything that's in a pencil format, anything that's easy to use and slap on, I would always recommend. And I feel like there's, again, a, there's a lot of nostalgia in this version here, but there's a lot of shades that are long time loves for me, like Red Square, Dragon Girl, Train Blue. If you can find a shade for you, beautiful formula. Nothing really else to say there. It's gorgeous and I love applying it. Uh, one of the lipsticks that I have, NARS has so many lipstick shades, but this Roman Holiday Sheer Lipstick is actually the only NARS lipstick that I have in my collection. And this pink is so fun. One of my favorite colors of all time. I love it and I love this formula. Also love the gold NARS classic packaging. And that, my friends, completes this favorites roundup. Those are a few more of my favorite brands. Again, like I mentioned before, I'm happy to continue doing this and kind of just tackling brand by brand, showing you a few of my favorite things and uh, consistent products and favorites that exist in my makeup collection. So please let me know in the comments down below what other brands you'd like to see me do this for. I'm so curious to hear from you if we share any favorites and if there are any things that I missed. 
and any products that you think I need to have in my favorites in my collection, please let me know in the comments down below. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all very, very soon for a new one. Bye!